Lesson 6. Algebraic Notation The purpose of this lesson is to clarify what typical algebraic notation means in the context of our methodology. Much of the confusion faced in algebra is simply a lack of understanding of what notation means. With proper understanding, the material becomes much clearer. Typical algebra textbooks list the order of operations for evaluating an expression like this. This works for a simple expression like this one. We add 4 to 2 to get 6, then take 2 to the 2 to get 4, multiply 3 times 4 to get 12, multiply 2 times 6 to get 12, divide 12 by 4 to get 3, then we add 12 and 5 to get 17, and then subtract 3 from 17 to get 14. However, teaching the order of operations like this is problematic and artificial. Recall that our lesson on the properties of real numbers didn't include division or subtraction, and we will not treat these as operators. Instead, you should think of them in terms of inverses, so that when you see a minus b, you think a plus the additive inverse of b, and when you see a divided by b, you think a times the multiplicative inverse of b. Since multiplication and addition are associative, it doesn't matter in what order you perform them. Also, it doesn't make sense to think of an order of operations being performed from left to right. We can have fractions with multiple terms in the numerator and denominator where left to right makes no sense. Likewise, we will often work with expressions with variables like this. In this case, we cannot evaluate the expression and the order of operations doesn't help us at all. Moreover, we will often need to solve equations for unknown quantities like this so it is important to understand exactly what the notation means. Instead of the order of operations, it makes more sense to speak of grouping priority. We will consider the priority as follows. First parentheses, then exponents and multiplicative inverses, then multiplication and additive inverses, finally addition. Keep in mind that this is all about interpreting notation. In the context of thinking of multiplication as shorthand for repeated addition, and exponents as a shorthand for repeated multiplication, this makes perfect sense. Notice that we have put multiplication together with additive inverses, or subtraction, and exponents together with multiplicative inverses, or division. Our reason for this is simple. Recall that subtraction is really adding the additive inverse, and the additive inverse is negative 1 times the value. Likewise, division is multiplying by the multiplicative inverse, which is the value to the power of negative 1. The natural question that arises is that when we see minus 3 times 5, is this equal to negative 3 times 5, or the negative of 3 times 5? The answer is that it doesn't matter since both are equal to negative 15. Likewise, 1 divided by 2 to the 2 could be 2 to the negative 1 to the 2, or 2 to the 2 to the negative 1, and both are equal to 2 to the negative 2, by our properties of exponents, which equals 1 fourth. Now let's look at an example. In this expression, we can perform groupings according to our list. If we do that, we get this, and we can evaluate the expression to eventually end up with 4. It is not necessary to put parentheses in the expression like this, but it is necessary to understand what the notation means. A few other remarks about notation are in order. We will often see expressions like this, 1 over x plus y. In this case, the fraction represents the inverse of x plus y. Even though no parentheses are shown, the grouping is implicit. Likewise, we might see 2 to the 2 plus 3 where it is implied that 2 and 3 are grouped as an exponent. So this is equal to 2 to the 5, or 32. This concludes the lesson.